Got it? Got is it working? It's but is it working? It's working. <laughs> so Hannah chooses a theme and then skirts around the issue. <laughs> if we're going to be talking about this issue, uh, we should probably uh, define our stances, I suppose. So Hannah was, what, pro-choice? Choice. I am also pro-choice. Amy is also <laughs> pro-choice. Technically pro-choice. Pro-choice, yes. yeah. For the longest time, I defined myself as pro-life because I believe that uh, life starts in conception and I personally wouldn't get one. But I didn't consider... Because I thought that's that's how I feel. But then I was like, it's a broad... In a broader sense, pro-choice because I should have the right to make that decision and everyone else should have the right to make their decision. Not because... I mean, I don't... Uh, necessarily think that life begins at conception. I think the potential for life begins at conception. I mean, at conception, it's cell division. <laughs> um, but as soon as like it becomes viable, obviously you can't have an abortion after a certain point. Science. Science. <laughs> Check. Hey, what up? So a lot of the issues is when people say, you know. Even if you don't want the child, the child still should live and you should put it up for adoption or, you know, foster it out. But you disregard that babies don't come out of nowhere. The woman has to carry it. Yeah. The woman is carrying a child that she doesn't want. That can have severe emotional and physical and mental impact upon her. Mm. A lot of, like, pro-life people are really pro-birth people. Because they want the child to be born, but they're not there... Like, they, they're not there to make sure that child has a healthy life. Mm. That was Crazy my opinion. But, um, yeah. I'm just gonna I'm exit stage right. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, Dorothy. Bye. Uh, people who pick at Planned, Parents or Planned Parenthood that in America, makes so that makes me sad. As a person... No, not sad. Like, generally aggressive, I want to stick that picket through <laughs> your throat. Just representing my, my religion and my relationship with Christ, and I don't like that. Uh, sorry. But don't be a twat. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, you know what I hate? Why is it a thing in America to talk about the access of birth control? What? <laughs> if you're, if you're, okay, if you're, if you're anti-abortion, be pro birth control. Exactly. The thing is, <laughs> if people are educated about sex, uh... and if people have access to birth control, the need for abortions will go down. Will drop so dramatically. So if you're if you're you know if you're in that you're, you want to be pro sexual education and and access to birth control because then it'll be less of a problem with it. Like you know, it's still there'll still be points where it'll be necessary, but yeah. Uh, I, I don't, don't get understand. it. I don't get it. And the thing, and the, now kids are turning to the internet because their parents feel too embarrassed to talk to them about sex. Teachers. I feel too embarrassed to talk about them, to talk with them about sex. So yeah. who are you going to turn to? Google. Yeah. Obviously. How do I sex? Kangaroos, they can actually, um, they absorb the fetus back into their body because like they give birth. <laughs> Kangaroos are amazing. Kangaroos can have... He's <laughs> kind of like, you know I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they do. If conditions aren't right, like if they're going through a drought, kangaroos can be like, yo, Joey in the, in the fetal zone. No more. I wish we could do that. That'd be you so amazing. Ah, oh, biology. That's disgusting. Anything right now? <laughs> Bye.